Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm going to be getting a makeover by robots. That's right, the future is now, baby. The robots are on the rise, and so are my eyelashes. Also, a quick thank you to Google Maps for sponsoring a portion of this video. So for years and years now, humans have fantasized about robots. Robots who can clean for you, cook for you, robots who can solve crime, robots who can save the human race, hot robots. And year after year, it seems like we are closer and closer to actually having some of this stuff. There are robot hotels, self-driving cars, robots that can clean your grill, robot dogs. I'm still holding out hope for the clothes folding robot, which I signed up for on a wait list about four years ago. So it was only a matter of time before the beauty robot started popping up. And as someone who does like to test out some nice beauty tech every now and again, when I heard of two different beauty robots in San Francisco, I knew we had to go and test them out. So in this video, we're gonna travel to the belly of the beast, Silicon Valley, and get strapped down to try an eyelash extension applying robot, and then put my digits on the line to try a nail painting robot. Wish me luck. But really quickly, let's talk Google Maps. Now, when traveling to San Francisco, and just in general during our travel adventures, Google Maps is always my go-to app for successfully navigating my way around. With mapping services in 99% of the world's countries and territories, and information, ratings, and reviews on over 250 million businesses and places worldwide. While in the Bay, we filmed at a bunch of different spots. Besides trying out both of our beauty robots, we also stayed overnight in a pinecone Airbnb in Santa Cruz, and went to a a ramen making class in downtown SF. And Google Maps led the way basically the entire time, especially helping us drive through the Santa Cruz mountains, which are pretty intense. Besides all that, Google Maps also has helpful features like their lists, which let you add and organize a bunch of destinations in a single place to keep your itinerary in order and for quick and easy access. And you can even customize your list with a little emoji so the locations are easier to keep track of on your map. For our SF trip, I was torn between the robot arm and the nail painting, so we went with with the camera. Google Maps also offers their newly added immersive view, which is a handy tool that helps you navigate the city with interactive 3D previews, as well as providing weather and traffic conditions. Google Maps continually saves my butt, no matter where around the world we end up. So if you wanna check out these cool features for yourself, make sure to download the Google Maps app using the link below. So thanks again to Google Maps for sponsoring this portion of our video. And now, Let's bring on the robots. Now, I was pretty intrigued by these robots. Beauty tech gadgets do seem to crop up pretty regularly nowadays. It makes sense, beauty is a huge market and there's a lot of room for disruption, but a lot of these consumer-facing beauty and wellness tech innovations, or at least the ones that have crossed my radar, have been limited to at-home diagnostic tools and customizable makeup and skincare printers, which even if they could be considered robots, are all pretty small and do all their machinations inside like a little container. Rather than applying anything straight to your face. And though many cool gadgets are constantly being announced, a lot of them seem to fizzle out before they even make it to market. I'm still looking at you, smart hairbrush. So to see two big mama robots that not only help you do the thing, but do the thing to you, that were both ready or very close to ready for business, certainly caught my attention. Although I suppose these are a bit more high stakes if they don't work, since my actual body parts are in play. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so after our night in the suspended pine cone, which also felt kind of risky, we headed over to our first robot appointment at Loom Lash in Oakland. Now, Loom Precision Lash was founded in 2017, and they are super, super close to being open to the public. Currently, they take preview eyelash extension appointments, kind of like final testing appointments at their Oakland office, and have plans to launch some of their lash applying robots in a major beauty retailer in the coming months. So I came in for my preview appointment prepped and ready, with no makeup on, especially no eye makeup so my lashes were clean, and notably, no caffeine in me to make sure I wouldn't be like uncontrollably twitchy inside the machine. So right after we're done with the service, I'm gonna promptly run across the street and get some coffee. Oh, I have a coffee and IV ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> it's like a B12 shot, Tyler's standing there with like a, a syringe. I have it hooked up to the robot. And we met with Rachel, who is the head of lash artistry at Loom. Yeah. And my eyes are in her hands today. They are. Rachel originally comes from a traditional lash artist background and has been helping develop the lash robots from the beauty end of things. All right, well, I'm ready to get started if you are. I'm ready. Okay, great, let's I, do it. I think I'm ready. 
I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> and after a brief consultation, she led me to the room with the big lash machines in them. Ignore the cameras, those are ours. We've never been here before. We've never been here before. What? What is this room? Which to me sort of looked like a cross between an MRI machine and a 3D printer. <laughs> right. This is Kate. We're gonna be doing your lashes today. Rachel told me the robots are all named after Charlie's Angels. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one's Farah. <laughs> so to start off, we had to prep the lashes, which meant that Kate, our robot, started prepping the lash extensions inside the machine. Oh, look at her going, moving, doing stuff. And Rachel started prepping my actual lashes on my face. Oh, hello, machine. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. Perfect. So after I army crawled past my cameras and tripods, Rachel applied some primer to my lashes to make sure they were nice and clean, and then applied these special under eye patches. Do you use anything for lash growth? Your um, lashes are so long. Oh, thank you. I think it's just because I'm hairy. <laughs> I'm hairy in all the right places? <laughs> well, in all the places. <laughs> as well as taped up my eyebrows to minimize lid movement. They're like 12 millimeters. Oh, is that is that long? It's very long. All right, you know what they say about Long lashes, right, Ty? What do they say? <laughs> Equally long leg hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Can't confirm. <Yeah. laughs> 12 millimeters, baby. And besides just keeping me taped up, the idea is that the robot will be able to read the barcodes on these patches under and above my eyes like a topographical map to figure out exactly where my lashes are. I'm in my uh, produce era. So once I was primed and ready. You kind of look like you're ready to cross the river Styx. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. I feel like I'm about to like sent down the river in like a canoe for a Viking funeral. Rachel raised me into the line of fire, or rather this air conditioned cube. Kind of cool in here. Nice and ventilated. Yeah. As it was time for Kate to get to work. Now the general way that this robot works is that it has these two arms over here that brush through your lashes and identify a single natural lash that the robot thinks could be suitable to apply an extension to. And they're kind of little fingers. Mm-hmm. So as I'm manually lashing, those are mm. tweezers. Oh, cool. And then once it has isolated that lash, its other arm over here will pick up a lash extension from its tray, dip it into the lash glue, and then place the extension on your natural lash. Perfect. Damn, I saw that happen. And then finally, it will cure the glue with a blue light to make the bond as secure as possible. Oh, sick. <laughs> Do you feel any heat when the laser's drying the glue? Actually a little bit. I was about to say it's a little warm, but like a nice little pleasant warming sensation. I didn't know it was a laser. Thanks for letting me know. It's a blue light, just to <laughs> clarify. It's not a laser, Tyler. It's a freaking laser. Now initially, I was a little nervous about this robot. You feel that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's it feel like, Zap? I wouldn't say I was scared, but it does sort of have pincer looking things that approach your eyeballs. So I had sort of a normal human level of skepticism about it. But after having a few lash extensions applied with no final destination results, it seemed like I was gonna be okay. Though I can confirm, you do definitely feel the little arms. I can definitely feel it like, not grabbing them, Brushing through? Yeah, brushing through. I, I can definitely feel it brushing through. It is sort of an unexpected sensation. In fact, I did flinch the first couple of times that they brushed me. Kind of like, um, you know, like a, a like a boy in the school play getting his eyeliner done for the first time. Like, ugh. <laughs> but it's not not pleasant. I was gonna say like monkey finding lice vibes. Yes. Right? In fact, it's kind of nice in a way. Kind of feels like a little butterfly kiss. I love that. Like a little hummingbird. Okay. You know, suckling at my lashes. That said, although they do certainly look pretty scary, we've been shown that these robotic arms are super lightweight and are attached to the rest of the machine with magnets. So say if you accidentally jammed your face right into them, they would just flop off rather than piercing through your eyeball. So that's good. I do see your lashes, Saf, and they're looking pretty long. Mm, even longer? It's a bonus curl there. Yeah, I'm only got like 15 millimeters. Oh, <laughs> all right. Here we go. She would fly away with 15 millimeters. I'm going for my, uh, the snuffleupagus look. You're in your snuffleupagus era? Well, ideally, I'll enter it. Now we had conferred with Rachel and she knew that I was gonna wanna say a few things about my initial reactions to the robot. But now that we were in the thick of the service. Right eye, a check. Woohoo! That's my celebratory wiggle. The ideal scenario for the machine's process would be for me to zip it and be as still as possible. All right, left eye time, baby. I'm talking about the left eye, baby. And just let the machine do its thing. So I'm gonna shut up now. Okay, great. I'm actually gonna pause it really quickly. Okay, great. <laughs> and, Perfect. In fact, Loom actually encourages you to take a beauty nap during your service. So I, in fact, did just that. Is it okay if I actually fall asleep? 
I wasn't allowed to have any coffee before this. And while Kate does her business, we can answer a couple of lingering questions, namely why this robot even exists, with the help of Loom's CEO, Nate. So are you Charlie? Uh, I, I guess I'm, <laughs> I guess. I'm Charlie, yeah. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> now, Nate comes from a robotics background, and when launching his company, he was really interested in a concept with a very simple value proposition that a robot could offer. Mm. Do you want your lashes fast, or do you want them slow? A traditional lash extension refill appointment can take between an hour to 90 minutes. We want to get that appointment down to 20 minutes, so mm. that it's like an I'll be right back kind of coffee break sort of a thing. And though Loom is currently a bit slower than that, that's mainly because the robot is only working on one eye at a time. Their end goal is actually to be lashing both eyes at once. So you know, double trouble. Although, Nate doesn't intend for this robot to automate the lash extension experience or replace lash artists. In fact, he envisions lash artists to be the ones operating the Loom robot. Kind of like how Rachel had been supervising and troubleshooting Kate's work on my lashes from behind the machine throughout the entire appointment. So what we want to do is work with lash artists. They get a tool that allows them to do three times this tool. <laughs> they get a tool. <laughs> that allows them to do three times the appointments in a day that they could before. I sort of view it like a surgeon using a robotic arm or something, but Nate insists Loom is going for cute spa, not medical vibes. Mmm, not medical. You got some googly eyes. A little cuter. <laughs> Add some googly eyes to Kate's up. <laughs> but beyond being able to lash faster, Nate and Rachel both also emphasize that sitting behind a robot is a lot easier on a lash artist's body than hunching over clients all day. So there are a lot of potential benefits to using these machines. Now returning to my lashes, after a quick nap. Okay, 50 lashes. We're gonna call it right there. It seemed like Kate was pretty much done. How you doing? Me. <laughs> I totally fell asleep in that one. Oh good, like that 100%. means you're comfortable. Good nap. Oh yeah. So it was time to lower me out of the machine and have Rachel give Kate's work a once over. How, how do I look? How do I look? Now, I'm not sure if Loom intends for this to be happening long term, but at least in this testing phase, Rachel then went over my lashes and corrected any she thought didn't look quite right. How do I feel compared to the robot? Um, you're a lot quieter. <laughs> as well as added any lashes she felt like Kate missed to make sure we had the perfect lash shape, which for my eyes, we had decided would be a rainbow arch. Kind of like natural glam, like it's not too much, but it's mm. just really beautiful and opens the eye. And after just a bit of zhuzhing, Rachel declared me good. Surprisingly, we didn't really go longer than her natural lashes. No? no? I think you just got more action. You're just a little bit thicker and curlier. So I guess it was time for me to take a look. All right, we've positioned me for the reveal. Yes. Ready? Yeah. Should I open my eyes? Uh, I'll tell you when and go for it. Whoa! Oh, ho, ho. oh yeah, I got lashes. Hello. Hello. Wow. Look at them. Now, maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but I had never gotten eyelash extensions before, and I thought they looked pretty awesome. They are very curly. You said these aren't really longer than my normal ones? No. They look long. In fact, these kind of have me considering getting eyelash extensions regularly. You actually, yeah, I can really see them. They're right? Re they're really jumpy yeah. right now. I like them. Hello. It's a new me, made by a robot. <laughs> Kate and Rachel duo. Now Loom's eyelash extensions ideally will last between four to six weeks with proper care. And when they are fully installed in their beauty retailer, they intend to charge about $170 for a full set of lashes and $80 for a refill, which from what I can tell is a pretty competitive price for lash extensions. I was getting pretty intimate with that robot for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know each other. Carnally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biblically. So fingers crossed they make it there. And if they make it there with googly eyes on their robots, you know where that idea came from. Oh, I think well, there are a sorry. couple of prime couple spots of for eyes. googly eyes. With <laughs> lashes, of course. Right? <laughs> like right here? I can see it. I can totally see it. What? So with my lashes filled and my eyeballs unscathed. Oh yeah, that's good. Nah, that's what I'm talking about. It was time for me to get my nails done. So we headed over to downtown San Francisco to get to the Clockwork nail painting robot. Now Clockwork was founded in 2018 and they have actually started launching robots that are open to the public over the past year or so. So you could potentially try this out for yourself even though there are currently only a few robots out there. Like this one in the lobby of the LinkedIn building. We got my lashes done, now I need to get my, my nails done. My tips done. Your digits? My digits, my phalanges. <laughs> mm, phalanges by robot. Mm, mm. And after a lengthy trek from the door, all the way back to the robot tucked away in this corner back here. Should I serpentine? 
Yeah, what are you doing? I don't know. I just feel like there's so much Real estate. time yeah. until we get to the robot. I don't know what to do. Just march slowly and quietly. We met up with Aaron, who is one of Clockworks founders and its CTO. And I would like to know more about this robot, please. You've come to the right place. Tell me about your robot. Now, to clarify, the Clockwork robot doesn't give you a manicure necessarily in that it doesn't massage your hands or file or shape your nails. It focuses specifically on quickly and perfectly applying a new coat of polish to your fingers. So for us, the sort of the biggest value proposition is convenience, um, but we also care a lot about speed and quality. Mm -hmm. But convenience is the thing that really sets us apart. So it's kind of meant to be used when you need to be polished in a pinch in a situation where you wouldn't have time to make it to a salon and not as a replacement for an actual manicure. And the locations Clockwork is choosing to place their robots reflect that goal of convenience, like in the lobby of the LinkedIn building, in the Student Union building at UC Berkeley, at the Delta Terminal and JFK Airport. For us, the idea is that we want to put the robot where you already are. Mm. And unlike Loom, Clockwork's robots are meant to be fully automated. So you just walk up to it and interact with the robot directly. Their motto is 10 nails, $10, 10 minutes. But I guess we'll see how quick and easy this thing really is. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got it set up on my old station. Yes. Now, after settling in, the first step of the process is to pick out the color you want. If you notice, there are a bunch of like color swatches over here with oh. like the different polishes they offer. So we get to pick one. Uh, for the most part, what we have on offer today is brands that you are probably familiar with, OPI, SE, mm. a, a few others. And after a little back and forth, I decided to go with this teal color. Okay, I got to pull down on cartridge to dispense. Oh, oh, I got it. Oh, look at that. Look at that little syringe. Partially because I thought it would show up well on camera, but it is also pretty cute. Okay, nailed it. <laughs> and then the machine wants you to remove your old nail polish. I don't have any on, but we might as well just like take off whatever's on there, right? Which it can do automatically for you after you click in a nail polish remover capsule into this little socket over here. Oh my God, did you see that? I did actually. Oh, oh I'm scared. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You put your fingertip like in the foam and then it like rotates around you. It looks kind of nice. It's kind of relaxing. Yeah. I really like this for some reason. It felt kind of like pampering and spa-like just a little bit. Oh, oh, uh, I love this part. You're sold. I'm sold. And then you're ready to load your polish into the machine, lock your finger into the stirrup down here. You kind of like shake hands with the device. <laughs> Hello there, robot. And then it's time to get to polishing. Hey awesome. guys, stay steady, Saf. I, uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not gonna intentionally move around. You have had coffee today, right? A fair amount. Do you guys recommend no coffee? Uh, coffee's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're good, you're good. Hopefully I'm not too twitchy. Now, the way that this robot works is that once you put your finger into the holster. All right, ready? I'm gonna press red, oh. I said ready, so it started going. Exhale, relax your arm. It takes two 3D images of your nails. Oh, oh. I was doing stuff. It's doing stuff. It's doing stuff. And then based on that, it decides what part of those images it thinks is your actual nail versus finger or cuticle. And then it combines that with its knowledge of the nail polish you chose and how it will flow. I see the little polish needle like coming towards me. Oh, it's oh, going. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's going. To decide where to place the polish and how much it should dispense. Oh, it feels kind of nice. I'm trying to be really still which is requiring some concentration, but it feels pretty nice. Yeah, it's got a little like massaging vibe, like a little bit of pressure. Now we had started with my thumb and we had a pretty difficult time getting it to be polished perfectly. Did I move too much? Is that uh, what that is? Very likely, yes. Okay. Takes a little bit of getting used to uh, yeah. exactly like how much movement is okay. Nothing went horribly wrong, but there were a few imperfections here and there. All right, shall we try it again? Yeah, maybe I'll stop talking to you so you can uh, <laughs> focus on keeping your hands steady. But according to Aaron, thumbs are the trickiest fingers to do. So after a couple of attempts, we decided to move on to my other fingers and loop back around to the thumb later. We suspected that I was probably generally moving too much. So I decided to once again, zip it and let the machine do its thing. There's a lot of you being quiet in this video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a ideal to be taking sound bites while a robot is giving you a makeover. And the other fingers went fine. That felt good. <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> Great actually. I'm gonna give it the finger, my finger. Let's paint, baby. Exhale, relax your arm. <sighs> And I could see how, with a little practice, you could probably paint your nails with this machine in less than 10 minutes, actually. That one looks great. Oh, it's on a roll. We're on a roll. But after painting the other four fingers on my right hand. Let her rip. Oh yeah, that one looks great. Oh, he got the pinky. 
Ooh. All right, pink air. We were back to the thumb and I still couldn't quite figure it out. No, I messed it up. What am I doing wrong? So we decided to consult the diagnostics video. Now, if you have a problem with a clockwork robot like out in the wild, it has an automatic feature that will call the home office. Um, and then someone on our end can sort of see what it sees and figure out what's going on and figure out what targeted advice we can give you. So serving as our in-person substitute, Aaron reviewed the footage that the robot recorded of my thumb and revealed that the problem was not that I was moving my thumb while it was getting polished, but rather I was moving slightly in between the imaging and the polishing. Do you see how you sort of move backwards a little mm. bit? So to decrease any tension in my arm, we removed the pad underneath my elbow. I have kind of gangly arms, so it might have been kind of pushing me up. I don't need the extra elevation. And we also decided that I should stop pressing the ready button and instead just use the voice activation feature and just say ready. Okay, ready. So there was no resettling after I reached over to press the screen. What do you think? Don't call to come back. <laughs> that looks good to me. And this finally worked. Oh yeah, that looks great. Wow. Oh okay. wow. Perfect. Boom. A polished thumb, people. Isn't she a beaut? A little diagnostics there. A, All right. a little knowledge goes a long way. <laughs> We got awesome. the replay cam there. <laughs> that was really what it was. Let's go to Mo. <laughs> and we blew through my left hand using this method. All right, ready, ready, <sighs> ready. Doing five nails in five attempts. Yeah. yeah. Look at those two thumbs. Looks great. All right, I'm learning. I'm getting it. I'm evolving. Yeah, and just like a robot, you're calibrating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been calibrating for a while. Yeah. So the clockwork robot. There is a learning curve, but I think we could say it was working. Did you get this side done? Yeah. Can we see how that looks? Sure. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh wow, those are good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's doing a good job. Now though Clockwork does offer a shimmery nail polish or two, they don't currently offer any holographic colors, but that doesn't mean they haven't tested with them. Apparently they have tested some of our friend Simply Nailogical's hollow taco polishes, and they say the viscosity of them works really well with the robot. And so we made some special holo taco cartridges just for you. Uh, these are exclusives, uh, but they will work in any clockwork robot that you can find. I had used normal clockwork polish on my nails, but we did have an extra hand in Tyler, who volunteered to get painted as well. I've learned vicariously through you. No, hopefully. Yeah, nah, I'm gonna get, get the, the thumb on my first try here. <laughs> you need the hand rest? Yeah, let's get the hand rest in here. Unless gangly. This was a few months before our Sophia X Hollow Taco collection came out, so we went with Espresso Your Hollow from the Hollow Barista collection. Ready. Hold on to your butts. And using all my tricks, namely just saying ready instead of pressing the ready button, he also swept his nails with polish. Hey, that looks pretty good actually. Yeah, I like that. That's... That looks pretty good. And may I say the color is very nice. With five nails in five attempts. Did I say ready? Did I tell it to go? Yeah, you did. That's the key. <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> so hey, that's pretty good. I feel a little bit like I'm a part of like a candy factory conveyor belt. You know, my hands just getting put down, pipe that comes in, doles out some caramel, keeps going, you know? Now for finishing steps, Clockwork offers little wands you can use to clean up any extra polished drips. Great, I don't know if I did anything, but <laughs> I tried. <laughs> as well as some quick drying drops to help seal in your manicure. As you may have noticed, Clockwork does only dispense like one thick coat of polish on each nail and that's it, but they are currently working on the ability for the robot to actually paint a top coat on top of the polish it gives you, which seems like a great idea, but that wasn't available yet when we got our nails done. So here are my nails and Tyler's nails painted by a robot. What do you think? Look at me, a robot did that. All in all, I think they look pretty good. Now, besides the process slash experience and how they work, one other question I had for these robot beauty services was, how long do they last? For the Clockwork Robot Manicure, they claim that it lasts between two days to a week, which is kind of a large range. I would say mine lasted a couple days before it started to chip a little bit, but I had to take off my polish for a different video before I could really get to the end of my polish. Our team member Haley also got her nails done by a Clockwork Robot and was able to track her polish a bit more closely. Here's 
her nails right after application, after two days, then after three days, and I would say it was pretty chipped by day four, which for regular polish with no top coat seems about par for the course. For the Loom Lash Robot, the lashes are supposed to last between four to six weeks before being fully gone. My appointment was a preview appointment, and unfortunately, Miss Kate did have a little problem with her blue curing light while doing my lashes, so they fell out a bit faster than they were supposed to. But our team member Haley also got her lashes done by a Loom robot, and though she has been steadily losing a few lashes here and there, she still has a fair amount of lashes two weeks later, which seems more on par with what Loom expects and pretty similar to traditional lash extensions. So all in all, though these robot beauty treatments do have a few kinks to work out here and there, they do generally do what they say they want to do, which all things considered is pretty cool. I generally enjoyed the treatments myself, but I think only time will tell if the general market will like them enough for them to succeed long term. I still think some googly eyes might help and or some hollow taco. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Here are our short form slash social media handles. And here's our merch website. And with that, I will see you guys next time.